properly. And uh, no, if we're waiting until September and we don't have our authorization, we may say something different. <laughs> Call me. We're in a direct business. <laughs> In 1988, when George Bush Sr. was elected President of the United States, Dan Quayle became the new Vice President. Four years later, he announced the American policy concerning GMOs, drafted just as Monsanto had wanted. We are taking this step as part of the President's Regulatory Relief Initiative, now in its second phase. The United States is already the world leader in biotechnology and we want to keep it that way. In 1991 alone, it was a $4 billion industry. It should reach at least $50 billion by the year 2000, as long as we resist the spread of unnecessary regulation. Do you think it, it was really a conspiracy? A conspiracy is a strong word. From a corporate standpoint, it was a brilliantly executed takeover. Early on, uh, a gentleman by the name of Michael Taylor became the deputy uh, administrator of the Food and Drug Administration right at the time that they were about to set out their policy. Who is Michael Taylor? On the Internet, only a single image remains of the man who once wielded his power so discreetly. Today he has a foundation called Resources for the Future. Hello, Mary Monique speaking. Hello, it's Mike Taylor. My questions are about your your role. I mean, when you uh, were working at the FDA, yeah? um, before hi being hired by the FDA, you worked as an attorney for Monsanto during seven years, didn't you? Well, I was a partner in a law firm of which Monsanto was a client, and uh -huh. I worked on some Monsanto matters, yes. Uh-huh. And apparently, if I understood well what I read, um, the FDA created a new position for you, Deputy Commissioner for Policy? Well... Because it, there was a special need at that time uh, at the FDA because of the new GMOs? Uh, it, had, it had nothing to do with GMOs. Ah. Nothing at all to do with GMOs. I wasn't the author of these policies, but that's just, that, that's very, that's just false. He moved over to the FDA in July of 1991. Up until that time, he was at a law firm called King & Spaulding. His personal clients included not only Monsanto, but the International Food Biotechnology Council. And he had drafted for them a proposal for how they would like to see genetically engineered foods regulated. And if you look at the proposal that was written for IFBC that was Michael Taylor's with the final one that was published, it looks very, very similar. So he, if he didn't write it, it looks like somebody took what he wrote and changed it slightly for the policy. Mr. Taylor was the um, uh, deputy commissioner at the time, and he provided the leadership um, for the project and served as the, the chief, uh, the sort of the lead uh, policy person in terms of uh, making sure that the project got done. So Monsanto played that game very well, both the political game and the uh, regulatory game. They played a key role in bovine growth hormone in getting that thing approved and also in how genetic engineering was dealt with. Michael Hansen has just mentioned bovine growth hormone. What's that? It's a transgenic hormone that's injected into cows, increasing dairy production by 20%. It would be an understatement to say that it had critics. The hormone threatens our health. Deadly poison. Manipulation. Called RBGH for a recombinant bovine growth hormone, Monsanto began selling it to dairy farmers in 1994 under the brand name Posilac. Posilac is the single most tested new product in history. You'll soon see the dramatic results Posilac can offer you. 
In 1985, Monsanto submitted Pozolac to the FDA for market approval. The experts at the FDA's Center for Veterinary Medicine reviewed the studies that the company had carried out on experimental herds. At the FDA, the veterinarian in charge of reviewing the data was Richard Burroughs. In an interview, he stated that agency officials had suppressed and manipulated data. The data that they came in with lacked a lot of insight into the dairy industry. They didn't ask crucial questions about these diseases, and that is mastitis, which is infection of the mammary gland, and reproductive problems. So when the first data came in and that was missing, I said, um, all right, guys, you need to go back and get information. So that set it back probably two or three years. Did you warn the FDA about your concerns? They pretty much just sidetracked me. They pulled in, my boss pulled in other people that were closer to him, and I saw less and less of the data. Even the things I had asked for to be done, I didn't like the mastitis studies. I never really got to see a lot of that because they figured, well, if you're in the way, we'll get you out of the way. You know, they sidetracked me. Eventually, I was fired. One day, I was escorted to the door and told that was it. I was, I was done. Have you been threatened? Yes. Um, mainly by the lawyers for Monsanto because when I was going for my appeal they told my lawyer that if I went in and revealed any company secrets in my defense that they would sue me. In the end the FDA was forced to reinstate this conscientious veterinarian. He eventually resigned disheartened. On the internet there's also talk about files that were stolen from the FDA and sent to Dr. Samuel Epstein, who heads the Cancer Prevention Coalition. In 1990, Samuel Epstein published an article in The Milkweed, the standard for dairy reporting, edited by Pete Hardin. The scoop was based on the secret documents that the two men scrutinized. One morning, uh, I came, I think in October of that year, I came into my office and found a great big box of documents. And um, the, it came from Washington, but no indication as to who sent it. This was a box of files of all Monsanto records which had been submitted to the FDA on the veterinary tests in the preceding six years or so. Well, this was great fun. Many of these documents are original documents. Uh, and as it says here, company confidential. It can, contains confidential information which not be, may not be reproduced, revealed to unauthorized persons, or sent outside the company without proper authorization. As an investigative journalist, that's the kind of stuff I like to report. Revealing this information made Monsanto and FDA very, very angry because what we were able to establish is that there were dramatic physiological changes in the animals that received the shot, the hormone shots, compared to their control group peers. For example, we see the ovaries of the cows receiving the synthetic hormone in the different treatment groups were for the right ovaries 34 percent larger 42 percent larger and 44 percent larger elsewhere in the stolen files it shows how there were severe problems with the reproduction of these treated animals the data is conclusive we provided the data the raw data uh, and summary data is peer-reviewed data not done by us to support the submission Every health authority who has looked at bovine somatotropin has found that it is completely safe for consumers.